Arriving in darkness, we awake and from our balcony have this contemplative cyclist to view as we look around. Looking back, we can see the modern Harbour Master's control tower, built around the classical building that houses port staff. We are within walking distance of the main city. In town, we started the statue to Lang Wapa. Antwerpians were constantly bullied by Lang Wapa, who is said to have had a strong dislike of the Virgin Mary. Thus, people around the town began placing effigies of the Holy Mother on their houses and stores to repel the giant. Details of family crests on the walls of Hetstan. Our next stop, De Vlies Hees, is just visible in the narrow entrance between these two classic buildings. De Vlies Hees, Butcher's House, was built between 1501 and 1504 in late Gothic style, using red brick and white sandstone. In 1913 it was converted to use as a museum. This style of brickwork came to be called bacon layers. Into the main square to see the city hall. With the Antwerp crest. The main square contains a statue to Silvius Bravo. It is said that there used to be a giant named Ruan Antigun who controlled the bridge over the river Schelt. The giant would cut off the hands of people who either could not or refused to pay him. Arise, Silvius Bravo, a Roman soldier, who decided to bring an end to Antigun's tyranny. Bravo killed Antigun and as a fitting symbol of the end of his oppression, cut off and tossed the giant's hand into the river. Bravo and the hand. Around the rest of the square are the magnificent guild houses initially built around 1580. During the Middle Ages, each trade of merchants strove to create their own unique and impressive hall to reflect their successes. The ornate facades had their coat of arms and a gilded statue on top. Down this narrow street, we are going to find the cathedral. A scallop shell marking a camino or route of a religious pilgrimage. Antwerp Cathedral for you to enjoy.
we have this view of the cathedral as we take coffee in the building with this vestment on display. An intriguing bit of art in the coffee shop. There were four Rubens paintings in the cathedral. The raising of the cross, the descent from the cross, the resurrection of Christ, the assumption of the Virgin Mary. Back outside we find this wishing well. It is attributed to Quentin Matsis, a Flemish painter. It is said that he was trained as an ironsmith before becoming a painter. Wanting to marry Katharina Haynes, he was told by her father that being a blacksmith was not good enough for his daughter. Matsis retrained as a painter and turned out to be so good at it that he was finally allowed to marry Katharina. Back to our bus for the trip back to the ship. We are staying overnight and have another day in Antwerp, unless you want to take a three-hour bus trip to see the flood defences at Vera. We were to have cruised there overnight, however a complete lock is out of commission. I am going out and about on my own on the bicycle. This is a common bicycle in Holland. Often kids are carried in the front compartment. Local transport is cheap and frequent. Many people live aboard barges in mooring areas found all around the city. The port house, I think the combination of old and new is intriguing. A surprise find near the port office. The discarded hand of Druin Antigoon clasps a mooring bollard as it seeks to find the body it belongs to. A port authority boat leaves the quay. The Commandant Fulkolt is an active rescue salvage ship based in Antwerp. I visit the museum by the stream. This box-like construction contains exhibits telling an innovative story about the city of Antwerp in the world and the world inside the city of Antwerp. These little plaques are scattered on the floor. The best translation I can get is, water keeps watch and what was worth was later kept as true. 65 meters above ground level there is a panoramic viewing platform. This building is imaginatively called the warehouse. There are no bridges over the River Schelt at Antwerp. Maybe they don't want another person chopping off hands. On the left, a tribute to a young lady, labelled, simply, Wise. On the right, the harbour rascal. Some boats do sink. Tunnels do allow travel between the two sides. There are also people ferries. A foot ferry operates near the city centre. St. Michael's Catholic Church to be viewed in contemplation.
Cafe Bukowski, a book cafe where you can choose coffee, beer, wine or soft drinks, read the newspaper and exchange books. The Butterfly Palace, a new apartment building. Plenty of cycles only tracks and I could manage 25 kph easily on the electric assist bike. Fish Eagle and Fish, another of Antwerp's many statues. A last look at a market square in Antwerp. Shortly the bridge will be lifted as we too depart Antwerp. Our contemplative cyclist is still there. Wonder what it would take to get him to move on. At the gala dinner, crew are invited into the dining room for us to thank them for their efforts. Last night on board with Alex, our cruise director, and Georgie, our hotel manager.